All right, it's Mr. Alexander again. We're on page three of the unit eight test review, picking up with number 12 here. And the first thing we're supposed to do is find the excluded values of the rational equation one over x squared plus x minus 21. Well, the word excluded means exactly the same as restricted. So we're still finding the restricted values here. Uh, I'm going to factor the bottom of this thing first. So in the denominator, I've got x squared plus 4x minus 21. And that's going to factor to x plus 7x minus 3. And that's what the factored form of that equation looks like on the bottom. Now, what we want to do is look at the denominator and see what it would set the denominator equal to zero, because you can't divide by zero. And that happens in two places. And so what we usually say is that x cannot equal the two things that would set this denominator equal to zero. So here, x would have to be a negative seven to turn that into a zero, and here it would have to be a positive three. Those are the two restricted or excluded values, negative 7 and 3. On the next one, determine the values for the x for which the function is not defined. Same thing, just another way to ask for the restricted values. So the first thing we ought to do is factor it. So I'm going to have a 3 on the top in the numerator. And in the denominator, I'm going to have x minus 10, x minus 5. So I've got two restricted values here. And I usually like to write x cannot equal positive 10 or positive 5. Those are the value of x for which the function is not defined. So therefore, x cannot equal those things. Uh, find the horizontal asymptote. Well, remember, there's three cases here. If it's bigger on top, then there's no horizontal asymptote. If it's bigger on bottom, then it's simply y equals 0. And if they're the same, the exponents, then uh, you just divide the coefficients. OK, so those are the three cases. The question is, what am I going to have here? And you might feel like you need to multiply these out, but I'm actually here to tell you that you don't need to. You only are concerned about the leading term. So we just have to figure out what the leading term is. So to figure that out, it's just x times x times x. That's x to the third. There's no number in front of that x to the third because there's no number in front of these x's. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff over here that I don't need to worry about because I'm only concerned about the leading term when it comes to horizontal asymptotes. The leading term here is going to be x times x, which is x squared. And there's some other stuff as well that I'm not worried about because I'm only looking at the leading terms. Let's see, is it bigger on top or bigger on bottom? x cubed is large is bigger exponent than x squared. Therefore, it's bigger on top, and therefore, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay. The next one, number 15, says, determine the equations of any vertical asymptotes and the values of x for any holes in the graph of the rational function. To do that, you need to factor the denominator. Still got an x minus 9 on top. And on the bottom, we're going to factor that as x plus 4 times x minus 3. And if we can cancel anything, it creates a hole. I can't cancel anything. Therefore, there aren't any holes. But there are one, two vertical asymptotes. In fact, there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 3. So there are two vertical asymptotes here. Number 16 says find the domain of any of 
Find the domain of the equations of any and the equations of any vertical or horizontal asymptotes for g of x equals da 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 da. All right, so let's make this a little bit simpler by factoring it. Keep it over x minus six, and I'm going to factor that to be x minus six x plus one. And hopefully you see that you can cancel out the x minus 6's, leaving me with just x plus 1. But you need to remember that there's a hole here at x equals positive 6. Therefore, when I'm writing the domain, which I'm going to do right here, since there's a hole at x equals 6 in the domain, the domain is all real numbers except for positive 6. Um, there are no vertical asymptotes because there's nothing remaining in the denominator. So I'll just say no vertical asymptotes. And horizontal asymptote. This thing is bigger on top than it is on the bottom. So there's actually no horizontal asymptotes either. So and no horizontal asymptote. That's it. Number 17, identify the horizontal asymptote for 2x plus 2 times 7x plus 3 over x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. So remember, when we're talking about the horizontal asymptote, we're only concerned about the leading terms. So I'm just going to multiply these first two together. I've got 14x squared plus a whole bunch of stuff I don't need to worry about. Over here, I'm going to have x times 2x is 2x squared plus a whole bunch of stuff I don't need to worry about. You'll notice that the leading exponents are the same and therefore to get the horizontal asymptote we're going to divide the leading coefficients of so 14 over 2 which equals 7. And there's your horizontal asymptote. All right, I'm going to flip over to page 4 here and start in on number 18 which is the beginning of our solving problems. And uh, what I'm going to try and do on these solving problems is solve them the best way, which and when I'm talking about the best, I'm talking about the fastest way, the way I think it's going to get me there the fastest. And on this one, I think cross multiplication is going to get me there the fastest. So I'm going to do negative 5 times x plus 5 equals negative 1 times x plus 1. So we are going to distribute and then combine like terms to get negative 5x minus 25 equals negative x minus 1. I'm going to add 1 to both sides and add 5x to both sides. That's going to give me negative 24 equals 4x. And when you divide both sides by 4, you're going to end up with x equals negative 6. And of course, when we're solving, don't forget we need to list the restricted values, which I always forget to do. x cannot equal negative 1 or negative 5. And this one is neither of those. Therefore, this is the correct answer. And we're done. All right, on number 19, very similar problem. I'm going to cross multiply again, but before I do, I'm going to remember to list the restricted values this time. x cannot equal positive 5 or negative 1. Just looking at the denominators to make that determination. So I'm going to cross multiply these and these. And it's going to give me g minus 7 times g plus 1 equals g minus 5 times g minus 8. And <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and FOIL that out so I can combine like terms. And I'm going to get g squared minus 6g minus 7 equals g squared minus 13g plus 40. 
And uh, I'm going to go ahead and subtract g squared from both sides. And I'm going to add 13g to both sides. So the g squared minus g squared, those drop out. Negative 6g plus 13g, well that's 7g equals, and I'm going to add 7 to both sides, 47. And that's not going to be a pretty answer, but the answer is g equals 47 over 7. All right, uh, not a restricted value. Put a big old box around it. Next is number 20. Solve the equation, check the solution. Uh, on this one, I think the easiest thing to do is get these denominators to be the same. So if I was gonna make these the same, I'd multiply by two on the top and the bottom. And that would give me 1 over 4g plus 6 over 4g equals negative 4. The reason I'm going to do that is so I can combine like terms here. Or not like terms, but put it on the same fraction to get 7 over 4g equals negative 4. And if you multiply both sides by 4g, then you've got 7 equals negative 16 g, divide by negative 16 and you're going to end up with g equals 7 over negative 16. And of course I forgot my restricted values because I always do. But in this case my restricted values, there's just one, x cannot equal 0. And since it doesn't, I'll go ahead and put a box around that. Yes. 21. Solve the given equation, round answers to the nearest hundredth if necessary. There's only one restricted value here, and that one is s cannot equal zero. That's my restricted value. Okay, um, I'm just going to subtract 8 from both sides to get, uh, let's see, 33 minus 8, that's 25 equals 1 over s. Multiply s on both sides, you get 25s equals 1, and then s equals 1 over 25, and I've got my calculator handy, 1 over 25 is 0.04, which is not a restricted value. 0.04, therefore, <clears throat> that's the correct solution. That was a pretty easy one. So let's do something a little bit tougher. Just a little bit tougher. Solve the equation. Oh boy, this looks like fun. Uh, I'm going to factor this right here. That's x plus 4, x plus 3. Therefore, my restricted values, x cannot equal negative 4 or negative 3. Taking that straight from the denominators. <clears throat> the easiest way here is to simply, simply multiply all three of these terms by this, x plus 4, x plus 3. So that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully you see when you do that, that these x plus 4s will cancel out, leaving me with 6 times x plus 3. And on the second one, oh, I've still got the minus sign. On the second one, the x plus 3s will cancel out, leaving me with just 1 times x plus 4. And then on the last one, x plus 4 cancels with x plus 4, x plus 3 cancels with x plus 3, leaving me with negative 26. So it looked really bad to start, but it's going to finish pretty easy. Because we just need to distribute now to get 6x plus 3 minus x minus 4 equals negative 26. And when you combine like terms, you get 5x minus 1 equals negative 26. Add the 1, divide by a 5. <clears throat> You've got x equals negative 25 divided by 5. Just write that down, which equals negative 5, which is not a restricted value. It's good to go. That is the answer. <clears throat> okay, last one here. Um, this one's interesting. I think the easiest thing to do here is to multiply everything but by x plus 2. And before I do that, I'm going to state my restricted value. I'm going to remember to do that. x cannot equal negative 2, so we'll keep that in mind. 
And then I'm going to multiply everything by x plus 2. So on this first term, the x plus 2's will cancel out, leaving me with x minus let's see, negative 1 eighth times x plus 2. So that's going to be negative 1 times x plus 2 divided by 8 equals, and on the last term here, the x plus 2's cancel out, giving me a negative 2. Okay. Uh, I guess that didn't really clear my fraction, which isn't awesome, I guess. But uh, I can clear the fraction now by multiplying everything by 8. It's probably what I should have done in the first place. 8x minus 1x plus 2 equals negative 16. 8x minus x is 7x. Distri distribute the negative sign to get a negative 2 equals negative 16. Add the 2, divide by 7, x equals negative 14 over 7, which equals negative 2, which, oh wait, look, the restricted value is x equals negative 2, which is why we always list that. And since that happens, that is not an answer, therefore there is new solution to that one. All right, that was very exciting. Uh, thanks for watching video two here. We got through number 23. We'll pick up with page four, or sorry, page five, which is number 24 on video number three.